The Spanish-American War was a relatively short conflict in 1898 that helped to shape America into an imperial and global power, while causing Spain to lose several of its overseas possessions and have a crisis of national identity. Much of the war revolved around Cuba, which had long been a subject of American interest. The U.S. was a significant trading partner for Cuba, with economic authority over the colony starting to shift to it, even though Spain held the political authority. Pre-war American opinion generally took Spain as a backward nation that was unable to deal fairly with Cuba. Supportive intervention in the colony began to rise as Americans drew parallels between the American Revolution and the Cuban Revolt. President McKinley wanted to end the revolt peacefully, but Spain refused to negotiate. The armored cruiser USS Maine was sent to Havana Harbor in order to ensure the safety of American citizens and interests, and to emphasize the need for reform. This was also done in response to demonstrations that were being planned by the rebels when the next Spanish governor of Cuba arrived. Naval forces were moved in position to attack Cuba in case war was not avoided. On the evening of February 15th, the Maine was sunk in Havana Harbor after suffering a massive explosion. This drew a great deal of attention to the tense situation in Cuba, and highly limited the chances of finding a peaceful resolution. A U.S. investigation found that the ship's powder magazines were ignited when an external explosion was set off under the ship's hull. This provided fodder for a media landscape that was eager to blame the Spanish and hungry for war. A speech by Republican Senator Redfield Proctor on March 17th switched many of the remaining advocates for peace to the pro-war cause. On April 21st, the U.S. Navy began a blockade of Cuba, and on April 23rd, Spain declared war. The first battle between American and Spanish forces was at Manila Bay on May 1st, when the U.S. Navy's Asiatic Squadron, led by Commodore George Dewey aboard the USS Olympia, defeated a Spanish squadron led by Admiral Patricio Montejo. This was a decisive American victory, with eight Spanish ships sunk as compared to one protected cruiser on the U.S. side damaged. This gave the U.S. control of the seas in the region, and allowed Dewey to capture Manila Harbor. Like in Cuba, the Philippines had a contingent of rebels fighting against Spanish occupation. The Philippine Revolution began in August 1896, and had been in a state of truce since the signing of a pact in 1897. Commodore Dewey transported Emilio Aguinaldo, a rebel Filipino leader, from exile in Hong Kong to the Philippines in order to rally more Filipinos against the Spanish occupying forces. The revolutionaries had success in capturing several provinces from the Spanish, and the Spanish forces surrendered on August 14th due to these actions, along with the capture of the important city of Manila by U.S. forces. Another event in the Pacific Theater was the capture of Guam. On June 20th, a U.S. fleet entered Guam's Upper Harbor, where it fired upon the Spanish fortification. Ironically, the Spanish forces there didn't know that they were at war, and surrendered quickly after they met the commander of the fleet, Henry Glass, aboard his flagship, the USS Charleston. The main action in the Caribbean theater took place on Cuba. The U.S. launched a land assault on Cuba that was supported by Cuban rebels, with the goal of capturing the city of Santiago de Cuba. As they crossed the island, two major battles were fought at defensive positions the Spanish had set up on the route to Santiago, the Battle of El Caney and the Battle of San Juan Hill. On July 1st, about 15,000 American troops, including the future President Theodore Roosevelt and his Rough Riders, Volunteer Cavalry Unit, attacked 1,270 entrenched Spanish soldiers in these two battles. The Battle of San Juan Hill was the bloodiest and most famous battle of the war. The American forces suffered almost five times as many losses as the Spanish. One interesting note is that this battle offered one of the first uses of machine guns to support infantry and U.S. military operations. A detachment of four Gatling guns provided excellent covering fire for the forces assaulting San Juan Heights. Additionally, Roosevelt and the Rough Riders received a good deal of fame from their role in the victory. The American advance halted after these two battles, though they soon launched a siege of Santiago in conjunction with the Cuban rebels. Santiago was also a target of U.S. naval operations. The Battle of Santiago de Cuba on July 3rd was the largest engagement of the war. It resulted in the destruction of the Spanish Caribbean squadron, which was heavily outgunned. American forces destroyed or grounded five of six ships attempting to leave the harbor. This battle effectively sealed American victory in the war. The American invasion forces began to leave Cuba on August 7th due to significant problems caused by the spread of yellow fever among the occupation force, although a cavalry regiment was left behind. American forces also attacked Puerto Rico. On May 12th, the U.S. Navy established a blockade of the capital city's harbor in San Juan Bay. 1,300 infantry soldiers landed on July 25th, and the Americans advanced toward the island's interior, fighting some small battles, such as the Battle of Yaco, the Battle of Fajardo, and the Battle of Guayama along the way. An armistice was signed on August 13th, where Spain relinquished its sovereignty over Puerto Rico. Hostilities were halted on August 12th, with a formal peace treaty being signed in Paris on December 10th. The U.S. gained the Philippines, Guam, and Puerto Rico as colonies, while Cuba became a U.S. protectorate. The war greatly reduced the Spanish Empire, leaving it with only a handful of overseas holdings remaining. On the other side, the war marked American entry into world affairs and changed the idea of American imperialism. It helped enforce the U.S.'s vision of itself as a defender of democracy and a major world power. It also helped to redefine national identity and served as somewhat of a solution to the social divisions plaguing the country, as Northerners and Southerners, along with black and white soldiers, all fought on the same side.